What is going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm recording on my phone. So my memory card finally took a crap. Like literally it fell apart, it was stuck on lock and I couldn't um, like I couldn't pull anything off of it. Um, it also says to format it, I can't format it. But I am gonna go grab another memory card later today. But right now, I am gonna be working on my valve cover. So in the last video, you guys should have seen the uh, Nomis Industry Slim Cap install. And I'm just doing a lot of small stuff right now instead of installing the turbo kit because I need the car to be running, right? And the reason for that is because I'm supposed to have cars coming in this week, so I need the car to be running so I can move it off the driveway. Now, if I install my turbo kit, the car's gonna be on the driveway for a little while because there's a lot that comes with the turbo kit, including the full exhaust system, which I still don't have materials for, but I do have some of the components ordered and it is on its way right now. The valve cover that's right here on the car is uh, a spare one that I had sitting around that has four bungs on it, two in the back and two in the front. Now I am running a ram horn and these two literally sits right on these runners right here because of where it's welded at and i don't want to run the two extra capped off because i don't have a four port catch can i just have the two in the back which will work perfectly fine for my setup so what i'm going to do is i have a spare valve cover that i already cleaned yesterday i used some aircraft paint stripper in the can the gel one works a lot better but this one works uh, just as good. So I stripped it down yesterday and then sanded off some imperfections. I cleaned the back side of it, right? So we don't get no oil contamination when I weld the new bungs on here. And I'm pretty much just gonna drill the two in the back as high as I could. So that way it'll clear the Golden Eagle fuel rail, fuel pressure regulator, and the gauge itself. You can see this one has a 45 to kind of cock it away from this guy. So. I got the bungs the other night that I went to BNR fitting to grab some of the other things I needed and I have them right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get these holes drilled out, weld them up, and then we'll talk about what color we're gonna be painting this. I think I'm gonna go above this line a little bit just to get it to the highest point possible. And I'm just gonna eyeball the center of this. That's probably like a quarter of an inch. You gotta be careful when you drill this out because there is a little baffle on the back of this uh, valve cover from the back side of the valve cover. You can see it right there and you don't want to drill through it, but I mean, if you do, it's not a big deal. You just got to clean it up before you put it back into the car. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the next size up so I could drill this hole bigger without touching that baffle. So that way we can fit this taper in it and I get this to seat flush. So I don't have a big enough drill bit, but this is as big as I can get the uh, holes to be. I didn't mess up the baffle on this end, which is good, but I did drill it all the way through so that way we can get some ventilation through the baffle of this big plate right here. And the front side got this nice little baffle so you don't have to worry about putting a plate on this end if you drill the hole, um, you know, lower it down, which, you know, exposes the hole more and more potential of oil going through. So because that's maybe like less than a quarter of an inch of a hole or a gap, I think uh, I don't have to plate the backside. Not that I have aluminum anyways, but um, yeah. So before I start welding this, I'm just gonna go ahead and blow everything out of it. Uh, I'm gonna do it again before paint. I'm gonna do it again before I install it in the car, but it's good uh, to make sure that you don't have any of these little, you know, So before I weld these guys, I am gonna remove this as well too, and then I'm gonna weld that shut and then grind it nice and flat. On my old valve cover, which is on Ricky's car, I don't even have this whole section. Like I spent time to cut it all out, right? And shaped it looking like this, so that way we don't have this guy, you know, just not having a purpose. So what had happened was I put the vice grip on it and I twisted it, right? It started moving and then I snapped the barb off. So 
at least half an inch of it is still in there but i use a drill bit to kind of oval all the metal out from the edge so that way it's just pure aluminum and i'm just going to weld it shut um that piece of metal that's still in there it's not going to go anywhere because it's press fitted so it definitely can't go backward because of the baffle and it can't come forward because it's welded shut so i'm not worried about it dropping into the engine and yeah so i'm gonna go ahead and change my cups here for aluminum which i use a 6w with a 332nd and then do this beforehand ac and then uh let's get to welding not shabby and I'm um, taking a little break but I just got to weld that up right there and then we can uh, clean that up and uh, get down to painting guys I'm really been running off of uh, like oh my god it's not even 200 anymore <laughs> it's literally like uh, 50 ish and I've been welding a lot of things from 200 I haven't filled this tank in like two months cuz you know what I'm saying it's expensive but yeah, we're making it happen though, guys. These guys are done. We do that right now. Let's get it. All right. So these guys right here is the size of a quarter. Take some masking tape, take a quarter, stick it on there, get a really nice sharp razor blade. This is brand spanking new. Trace the quarter onto the tape as easy as it looks. Remove the tape from the quarter, the quarter, and just go ahead and uh, line it up with the valve cover slot for the grommet, and that's that. I've already done the whole valve cover and taped off everything I don't want painted, including the threads right here, these guys in the middle, and the one in the corner. This is the last one right here for this guy, and we are ready to paint. Guys, this took a cool minute. I decided I wanted to tape all of the letterings and emblem before painting it. Uh, usually I sand it off, like tape off the outer perimeter and then sand it flat, but sometimes I press it too hard and I sand the inside in between. So I figured this time around, I'm just gonna tape as much as I can. I'm probably still gonna sand it because some of the areas are not fully taped up, but it is mostly taped up, so it takes less sanding. I did sand this beforehand, so it's already like nice and shiny silver. And uh, now, now we're ready for the paint. So in this case, I, for the Type R motor, this one, I'm, I'm gonna wrap this engine up after I pressure wash it, get it all nice and clean. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strip this one down and paint this wrinkle red just to give it more of a Type R feel. But I think the 90, might be the 96 spec. This is a 96 engine. And the 96 spec is actually a flatter, like non-wrinkle valve cover. I could be wrong, but I had an authentic Type R valve cover back in the days with a chrome cap that wasn't like crazy wrinkle red, um, but it was the original red. So. I want to, for this engine, I want to paint this wrinkle red, nice and clean, sand all this off nice and clean, get the silver cap, and then wrap this engine up and put it away somewhere. So for this valve cover, if you guys remember the valve cover that was in the CRX before was a blue one. Now I'm keeping it the same theme. So the reason why it was blue was because I kept it in the same theme 
with this car uh with the blue ascent the blue you know valve cover charge pipe and stuff and this car has a great engine bay because eventually i'm going to paint it the same color as that car don't ask me why that's just kind of a, a static a static color now i guess but i'm not painting it the war rally blue that it was this is the wrinkle red for the type r motor but i am still going to keep it blue but, but this time i'm going to paint it wrinkle blue now i believe this comes out a little bit darker blue than the cap is but wrinkle blue um why why wrinkle this time around because this motor came out of tyga's car and he did a really nice job on the uh manifold which is wrinkle black and i kind of like this color but like i said uh I'm, it's not plain to me but it's just i don't know it looks normal so i figured i might change up a few things like the charge pipe is chrome the one down there is chrome i'm gonna do a dark blue or whatever shade this is wrinkle blue valve cover i might even do black charge pipes or blue charge pipes i don't know but we'll get to it when we get to it but right now i'm gonna paint that wrinkle blue or i hope it comes out wrinkle blue or i know it'll come out blue but will it wrinkle let's find out now the instruction says to do eight to ten inches away three coats heavy coats it needs a heavy coat for it to wrinkle it won't wrinkle right away five minutes in between coats um the last time i did wrinkle paint was in my brother's wagon and i had a makeshift like oven booth <laughs> and um i haven't done any wrinkles since then and that's been about three years now so i'm gonna try my best to try to get this wrinkle and i'm not using an oven this time around but i do have my brother's heat gun which is right here nice and strong and i watched tommy's video and he did uh, a red valve cover on his car came out amazing and he just sprayed it like that used a heat gun got all the wrinkle to come out looks awesome so i'm gonna repeat his process in hopes of getting a nice wrinkle blue on the new valve cover the instructions in the back says to do vertical one coat horizontal one coat diagonal one coat three coats i mean if you feel like you want to put more on it you're more than welcome to put more on it because the instruction says in the back that paint dries really slowly allows two hours to dry paint fails to wrinkle or wrinkle is uneven apply additional coats of paint so um that's what it says and let's do our first coat here oh that is blue for sure oh man that, that is blue blue wait a minute wait this is more blue than i i'm hoping for i'm actually shooting for a much darker blue but uh okay well this is this is not the blue i was looking for hmm I don't know. Not the blue I was expecting. This is not the blue I was expecting. This was not the blue that I was expecting. Um, hopefully, hopefully this darkens up on the wrinkle. I mean, I'm crossing fingers. It's a little brighter than I want it. Gotta get in between all the crevices, in between the letterings. And that's the first coat. I'm going to use my phone to do the timer real quick. Five minutes in between. And let's see how this turns out. Now, the quality in the video may be different. But if you guys have blue masking tape, it's pretty damn close. So imagine this and how bright this valve cover is. Eh. Now, the other way. I mean, the paint's already messed up on the CRX.
That was pretty heavy, actually. When you're using a heat gun, you have to make sure you distribute the heat evenly. Otherwise, it'll wrinkle up more than the rest of the valve cover. Um, this is why people put it in the oven, because the oven distributes heat evenly. Um, right now, it's looking good. But like I said, this is a lot brighter than I, than I want it. But it's coming out. It's coming out. Uh, I've only been doing it for about five minutes. Just running it through really quickly to get it all nice and evenly hot. But I don't know. I might I might want more wrinkle than this. So I might add layers after. I'm not sure yet. Honestly, I think I think I want to take this off and uh, and wrinkle this one too. So on top of the three coats, I added three more coats and letting it bake in the sun and it looks a lot better check that out damn it sucks that it's not the color that i was looking for but i think it'll do for now so so here's the valve cover probably an hour since baking in the sun the sun has moved and uh i think this is pretty much it for the valve cover i mean i'm just gonna rock it because i already bunked it and it's already um paint it so but yeah it's like i said it's brighter than what i wanted but i mean if you guys have seen the war rally blue without the clear coat is just as bright so i'm kind of thinking of it as there's no clear coat on here uh the wrinkle is not crazy it's just enough for me i mean i can go super crazier and get it more wrinkled like right there this may not be a permanent color so i'm not worried about this getting super wrinkled up but it is definitely better than that. And it will allow me to put the ram horn on without the two extra bungs in the front. So I'm gonna rock it, but I'm gonna go ahead and just clean up real quick. Um, I may just do that valve cover. I'm just gonna strip it out and do the whole process. And uh, if I end up doing it, I'll, I'll show you guys the end product. But if I don't, I might just get this installed in there and just let it rest the rest of the way because the car is not going to move for maybe a day or so so it'll just dry while it's on the car so um cleanup time man why does that got to be the same shade of blue This can is really old. That's why it's spraying like that. This has definitely been repainted. It has self touching timer on here. So, with a light wire wheel, I mean, it takes it off pretty pretty quick. So, um, yeah, just going to clear it up a little bit more. And I'm just going to send it with the wrinkle red after I tape everything up, of course. And now, now the taping job. damn guys <laughs> these are two really bright ass colors but it looks good i like that light wrinkle like not heavy wrinkle i mean i did a little heavy right there but it's a light wrinkle all around this is only two coats i'm gonna do one more and what i did differently between this and this guy is between each coat i was 
I was using the heat gun to wrinkle it up before the next layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one more. I did vertical, horizontal. I didn't do diagonal, but I am going to put one more layer on this. Um, there are some spots that I missed, like on the edges for some reason. Uh, the red doesn't like it, it's more transparent than this guy, but I mean, it looks good regardless. But I think that's pretty much going to be it for this video, guys. I mean, I'm not going to ask you which one you think I should rock because this one has the bungs on it. But I think both valve covers look freaking awesome. So this guy's gonna look pretty on that engine wrapped up and stored away for whenever we're gonna use a Type R motor again. So I think that's gonna wrap up this video, guys. Um, we are making progress towards the all-wheel drive CRX, although we're not physically working on the car, but we're making small progress towards the car. Um, doing all of these little things right here is just staying busy in between, you know, waiting for cars to show up and stuff like that. But I don't know. I'm, the more I'm looking at this color, the more I'm like, I'm digging it. I can't wait to peel it off. I'm not going to do it today in this video. I'm going to let both of these dry overnight. It does require, I think it says 48 hours on the can. Maybe I'll find more things to uh, wrinkle up. Probably going to Photoshop some things in the engine bay to see how it will look before I do it. But yeah, guys, this is pretty much going to be the end of this video. Um, progress is better than no progress and that's what we're doing here tonight in this video if you guys think both valve covers turn out great be sure to give us a thumbs up and, and if you guys want to stick around for everything else to come here customer cars the turbo setup be sure to hit the subscribe button but with that being said thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video peace